In this video, I'm going to be talking about the new Z6 II and Z7 II. I've had them for two weeks now, but more importantly, I'm also going to be talking about my experience with the Z system. I've had my Z7 for two years now, and there's lots of things that I've loved about it, and there's some things that I'd like to see improved. So have those things made the way to the Z7 II. morning everybody fantastic to see you all again so as you can see it's pretty dark and it's a really frosty morning and I'm hoping to get some shots I'm at Mantor in the Peak District which is a really popular place and a place I've shot many many times before but I thought I'd come back I've not been here for probably I don't know nine months and it's clear, so perfectly clear. It's going to be interesting because it's tricky to shoot here without any clouds, but see what we can get. The frost might help. Oh, we've got some amazing colour in the sky over there. Um, it looks absolutely fantastic. And there's a little bit of cloud still in the valley. I thought there might be an inversion, but there's a little bit too much wind, so I think that's just going to get blown away by the time I need to shoot it. So you can see there's some grasses down here, which are quite nice in this wall. But what I'm really interested in is the path over there. Um, because I think it's wet, and a wet path is going to make a really big difference to this because it just catches some of the light, and that is what I want to focus on, that foreground, that wet path. So just talking a little bit about the... Z series of cameras. I've had the Z7 for two years since it was launched and there's a lot of similarities between the Z7 and Z7 II um, and some things that they've improved and that's what I want to talk about in this video. You know, what are those things they've improved? Um, has it made a difference? And if you're coming from like something like a D810 or a D850, is that a, going to be a, a good move to go to the Z7 II or Z7 7 II? So hopefully I'll be able to address some of those questions and um, get some photos as well. Ah. Right, let's go and see if I can find a composition. So you can see that the path is wet and that's going to hopefully catch some of the light from the sky as it gets brighter. And there's a composition down here that I'm I think it'll be quite good where it curves around. I can just get a bit of the curve of that path. So I'm gonna go and try and find that. I'm about 45 minutes before sunrise at the moment. Okay, so I've got a 14 to 24 millimeter lens on. And one of the things I just wanted to say about the Z7 actually is just, is the lenses because when I first got my Z7, um, there wasn't a huge amount of lenses out, but the lenses that were out, the F4 lenses, I was a little bit worried about, I was thinking, are oh, they going to be good enough? Um, and one of the first ones I got was this 24 to 70 F4 lens. It's tiny, but it's so good. It's such a, an amazingly sharp lens. So if you're worried about going to the Z series and thinking you've got to get the F2.8 lenses, I wouldn't be too bothered about those, first of all, because these F4 lenses are light, so I often take these um, when I'm hiking a bit further, and super sharp. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go, we'll go to the studio later and I'll show you some of the shots that I've taken with this and talk about resolution a little bit more because the sensor in the Z7 II is the same as the Z7. But anyway, on this one here we've got the 1424 F2.8 and this is a great lens, but it's only a little bit sharper just at the corners than the, the F4. And it's, but it's small, which I like about. The advantage of the F4 lens is that takes filters of a standard size, whereas this you need 112 millimeter filters. So I've come just a little bit further down now. And there's a few advantages of that. One is that the, the mountains, if you can call them mountains, small hills are just a little bit elevated. Um, 
And then the other advantage is I can see into this valley a little bit better and I really like this valley down on the left hand side because it's got a bit of frost in it, the colours are going to be nice, the colours in the clouds are there are, are nice and um, it's just a question now of waiting for the sky to do something good. Come on clouds, come on everything. So just a quick thing whilst I'm waiting for the light is if you're coming from the previous model, the Z6 and Z7 to this model, then you might be a bit worried about L brackets or accessories that you might have for it. Well, the dimensions are, are almost the same. Um, to be honest, you can't really tell any different, even though it does say there's a, a tiny difference in dimensions. But my L bracket that I've got fits and that, that's fantastic. So it definitely pays off to come early to a location. So I, I've, I've been here so many times before and gone up and down this section, but I've just found an area here where the wall, these stones were originally a wall and it's collapsed, but I found a bit of the wall where it still looks like a wall and even further down it might look even better. Um, so I'm trying a vertical shot, just trying to get some of the colour in the background there, which is so nice. Uh, I feel that if I try a really wide shot at the moment with any, without any light, on the right hand side of the image, then that gets a bit lost. It's a, it's, a, it's a big open space that's not got a lot of detail. So this sort of w works a lot better, I think. And just the fact we've got a little bit of cloud in the sky makes a difference. Sailors passing on the street, are you ready for peace? Oh, it could all be working out well, this. The, um, there's some good cloud coming there. I've just got to pray that over there, the sun comes up. I'll just show you with my phone. <laughs> so you can see that over there, we've just got a bit of cloud on the horizon, which is such a shame. Just sort of down there. But this cloud over here is looking so good. If it catches the light, it'll be absolutely fantastic. Ships are filling up fast. Are you ready for ease? Mm. Okay, here we go. We've got a bit of sunlight now, so the cloud's lighting up. Got my composition set up. And it looks absolutely amazing. Right, let me just show you from down here. Oh, this looks absolutely perfect. And this is where the Z7 II comes into its own because the dynamic range pretty much covers everything. And we can have a look at that back in the studio, but I'm getting all the way from the shadow detail down here to the highlights in the sky covered and it looks fantastic. So, focus on the back in the middle and at the front and then if I need to I can exposure stack it. I've got it F10 ISO 64. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> it doesn't get better than this and it's even just catching the mountains over there now. So this is where the 14 millimeter as well really helps because I've got this super wide angle. Um, so I might just come up just a little bit just to, so I can go point a little bit further down on it. Oh, this is such a nice shot. It's really worked out. Yeah, so you can see, you can see now that I'm, I'm getting it all in one. I'm still going to bracket a little bit, and I've just got to be careful of these highlights up here. But I'm just clicking there. I've got it on auto exposure. Clicking there. Clicking there. That does look really good. Forget my memories and leave those hurt and knees behind so one of the fantastic things with the z6 and z7 II is that you now have dual card slots and that for me is not so much about the actual fact that you've got that redundancy because i don't i should do but i don't use two cards but it's more about um, for me, the fact that if you're coming to this camera, before you had to buy an XQD card, and these aren't cheap, these are expensive, a 64 gigabyte one is probably about 
150 to 200 pounds. Um, whereas you get a 64 gigabyte SD card for 10 pounds. So, you know, you've got to weigh that up when you, when you think about it. If you're just doing still photography, you don't want really fast write speeds, where if you're doing like um, 120 frames per second or 60 frames per second at 4K, then an SD card is going to be good enough. So at the moment, I'm just writing to an SD card uh, on the Z7 II at the moment, because this is just my, my stills camera. One of the things that's been approved with the Z6 II and Z7 II is the actual autofocus. And um, what I would say though is that the autofocus improved with the firmware updates. So, you know, I had it from day one, and certainly there were some improvements needed right at the beginning. And they've added, um, you know, released quite a lot of firmware updates which has improved autofocus, including adding um, eye um, detect for, for pets, which is really good for pebbles. Uh, I shot some the other day though with the Z6 II, and I think I got more in focus. So it's looks to me, not being a wildlife photographer or a pet photographer, that it's improved um, over, over the Z6, and I suspect that's the faster chip. The thing that I do need, though, is video autofocus. I'm a one-man band, and I need it to be able to keep focus on my face when I'm doing a piece to camera like this. And then also, what I want is that, you know, it, it doesn't lose focus, or if it does um, tweak focus, it gets focused back quickly. So, you know, when I walk, look away and I'm pointing to the scene like that, and then look back, I want it to be staying in focus on my face and not just losing focus and then not finding my face again. I think it does that a lot better. Oh, what a morning. That was fantastic. Definitely deserve a coffee now. Oh. Yeah, that was fun. that was really, really good. Just having the clouds made all the difference. In fact, it's cloud, cloudy completely over now. So one, one of the things that um, I did talk about before was the screen and how good the screen is. You know, it's a fantastic quality screen. It's bright, the color rendition is really good. The one thing that I just don't like about it, um, and they haven't changed this unfortunately in the Z6 II and the Z7 II, is that it only articulates in that direction. It would be so nice when I was doing a portrait if it articulated out like that. I, I just think that would make a really big difference. So. It's a shame that you know they, they, they don't do that. Most of the improvements they've made have been the ones that I wanted. That's one that hopefully will come in a in a future camera. It's not a show stopper, but you know ergonomics uh, uh, you know are important. And in fact, the ergonomics of this camera are so good. Just being able to hold it, um, you know, and it feeling good. And I was a little bit worried coming from an, a a D810 um, and a D850 that that felt like it fitted in my in my hand, but. This, this is really nice, it fits really well, and the ergonomics of it are, are really good. The menu system I love. Um, and actually the app, um, Nikon Snapbridge, which has improved again um, with the new cameras, but it's, it's something that I use all the time because it allows me to just take my images and put them on my phone. In fact, I, I did this video a few days ago and it just didn't work, so the light wasn't very good. So I'll take you back to a video that I did on Snapbridge and then we'll go to the studio and we'll have a look at some prints. So one of my absolute favorite features of the Z series cameras is Nikon Snapbridge. It's an app for your phone. What it means is it just stays connected to your camera. You take your photos. So here I might be taking a photo, I don't know, of this. Get my photo. And then you just put your camera down. And next time you look at your phone, it will have downloaded a two megapixel image to your photos on your phone it's so cool so you can see here that it's connected to, to, to my camera it connects by bluetooth and, wi and wi-fi but if you just do it by bluetooth it just does it automatically when you switch your camera on it's super easy to do and then i've just taken those photos and if i go here you can see that those photos are now downloaded i can look at them if i want to i can post them on instagram it just makes it so useful to have that feature so Snapbridge is super useful. Okay, quickly, before I just go on and show you a print from that shoot, which just looks so incredible printed big, I just want to mention a few other things that I didn't mention whilst out in the field. The first one is video. Uh, obviously, I was recording everything with a Nikon Z6 II, and um, yeah, it just looked amazing. The focus worked so well. I felt like I just got everything just, just worked and, and, and snapped onto my face a lot better. Not that the, the Z6 is a problem, it's just that I felt 
that there was never any issues with the Z6 Mark II. Now, I'm not saying it's perfect. You know, I've not done extensive tests on it, and there's probably other reviewers that have done that, so go and check them out. The, the, the other thing with video, which has been improved, is it now does 4K60 on the Z6 and Z7 II, which is so useful as a filmmaker. And um, you can also put external power into the camera as well, um, which again is really useful, like in this situation now when I'm recording on it, um, you know, not to have to use a battery, but to be able to use external power is brilliant. And, and, and then the final thing, I just wanted to mention the, the autofocus again. I was shooting pebbles, you know, out um, down where I walk pebbles and I practiced a little bit with that. And she's so difficult to get in focus because obviously she's running so fast, but the pet eye autofocus works better now. I definitely got more shots in focus. So that that's again brilliant. You know, it's super easy to to, to use and it, and it tracks the face and, and the eye of the of the of the dog. Um, so I got I got some good shots of pebbles. Sing along as they howl and be fulfilled oh. Many more will come Right, so this is the photo that I printed off the Z7 II that I took in, in the field that you saw me um, shoot. Now this is actually a focus stack, so I focused, even though it's on um, 14 millimeters, on the 14 to 24 millimeter lens, I was really close here and there was just a little bit of softness here, so I just stacked two images. So this part is stacked to the rest of it. Um, I did that in Photoshop. If you don't know how to do that, then um, you can check out my masterclass, which has got a video on it. So yeah, I mean, it just looks incredible. And you see that detail that you get with a 45 megapixel sensor like there is in the Z7 and Z7 Mark II they are really amazing sensors. Now the sensor hasn't changed, but to me, it doesn't really need to. It's so incredible. And as a professional photographer that wants to sell big prints, that makes such a difference. And you can see down here that just the detail of the grasses and everything, this is printed about a meter wide. Um, and it just, just every part of it just looks so, so good. You can see like the frost on the rocks here. You can see, you know, the details in the houses down here. Ah, oh, it's just, it's just so good. And, um, you know, you've seen images that I've taken on the Z7, so you've got an appreciation of what it's like, but here's another one. Here's, here's another image that I showed before, um, in, I think it was last week's video of, of this woodland. Again, this was taken on the Z7, but it's got the same sensor as the Z7 Mark II. And you can see the detail in that, and that's one of the things I love so much about using the the, the 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 Z series, and especially the Z7. It's just that amount of detail that you can pull out, and the lenses are just so good that allow you to pull that 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 detail out. So I'm super happy you know, with with using that system. Um, I'm sure something bigger and better will come in the future, but for me at the moment, I just don't need anything. This is good enough for what I do as a professional photographer. The other thing is, I don't think I mentioned it enough, but just how robust these cameras are uh, is so important to me. I shoot in snow and wind and rain all the time, and I wanna make sure that if it gets soaking wet, then I'm still gonna be able to use it the next day. As a professional photographer, it's so important. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, some of my thoughts on the Z series cameras, I've got so many other things I can, I can tell you, um, but I think that's a fairly good summary of the things that I've enjoyed using over the last two years with my Z7 and my Z6, and a little bit about the improvements that have been made with the Z7 II and the Z6 II. Thanks ever so much for watching. See you on Sunday. We just reboot.